Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in to the Indie Comics Network. This is another episode of Drawing with Randy. We had such a great response to last week's video on how to draw hot stuff that I figured we should have a fresh start, go back to the beginning, and uh, start with Cartooning 101, the very basic basics. It's made for everyone. Hope you all enjoy it. Here we go. Okay, if everything is working right, you are staring at my screen on my Photoshop. All right. We are here to talk about the basic, basic fundamentals of cartooning. This is Cartooning 101. This is really going to be a condensed version of what I do in the first class uh, in front of a, a group of kids. All right? And some of this might be a little elementary. Hopefully, it's going to be a little entertaining. You can always laugh at my guffaws. I've got uh, everything shut off down here in the basement except for the sub pump. So if you hear that sub pump turn on and I'm on a good take, I'm probably not going to stop. So just so you know. If there's a strange noise that pops up, that's what it is. So, materials. Materials, really, anything that you can mark on paper, that's what you need. Uh, in my classes, we always run with pencil and paper. And I do that all the way through the course. That's it, just pencil and pencil and piece of paper. I get some typing paper and run it from there. Every cartoon needs to start with a pencil and paper. Even if they're working off of a computer, they're just working off of a stylus and a whole different uh, different type of paper. But pencil and paper, it's very important. Uh, typing paper, any kind of paper. When I first started drawing at home, I used to drive my parents crazy because I was using notebook paper. It got to the point where they were rationing me down to two uh, sheets of notebook paper a day. So, of course, I very quickly figured out that if you take that piece of paper and you divide it <laughs> with two lines, all of a sudden you have four pieces of paper or you're, you have four windows. You turn it over, you've got eight, and then soon after that I started telling stories. And that's really where I started doing sequential art, because I would take characters and run it from panel to panel to panel to panel. There's two real basic rules of cartooning that you always have to keep in mind, especially when you're starting. Rule number one is to draw light. You're gonna take that pencil and you're gonna draw as light as possible. And I like, when I pencil on my board here, I like going down to about a 40%. Drawing light is very important so that eraser will just take it right up easier. You'll save trouble on, on erasers. That's the number one problem with the pencils that I have in my classes is that eraser always goes first. It wears right down to nothing. Plus, the way that I teach drawing is to run from an outline out and not every line that you lay on that paper is gonna stay there. Rule number two, like I said, you're always gonna make mistakes. Rule number two, of course, is don't get frustrated. Don't let it uh, throw you if when you're sitting here drawing a character that in your mind you think, oh, this is really simple, it's real easy, and it doesn't look exactly right. Don't get mad at the paper. Take an eraser and erase it if you can. If not, then start over. Turn your paper over, get another piece of paper, whatever you have to do, but don't get frustrated. Don't tell yourself that you can't draw, because that's really a stumbling block for a lot of young kids when they sit here and they try to uh, draw for the first or second time, or they're, they're cartooning something, it doesn't look right, they get frustrated at it, they throw a switch in the back of their brain, they decide that they can't draw anymore, and they completely disengage, and they shut down. Drawing, cartooning, is just like any other skill. You have to learn as well as uh, the, the talent for it is really comes out in your style a lot more than your ability, uh, especially to start with, to cartoon. It's really all hand-eye coordination. How I explain it to the kids is that if you're sitting here on your favorite uh, video game and you can't get past the first level on whatever game that you're on, do you tell yourself that you can't play video games anymore? and you take that entire system and toss it into the trash. That's not how that works most of the time. The way it works is that you go through on your video game and you study that level and you stay on it or you go, you get up online and you find out the cheats or whatever you have to do in order to get past that first level or that level in particular and get up to the next level. Cartooning, doing anything really, learning anything is the exact same way. You can't give up on it if you really want to do it. And if you have a passion for it, you're not going to give up on it. You're just going to keep going and keep going and keep going. 
comics, cartoons are not here to frustrate you. You're here to have fun. Uh, a lot of the kids, when they first start, they go, well, I can't draw. Um, the, the big counter for that that I always tell them is, well, it's a good thing we're not drawing. We're only here cartooning. So just follow along, and you'll see how easy it is. Cartoons are really simple. Cartoons are made to be very iconic and very simplistic. They're made to, to trick the mind in order to get their point across as quickly and as easily as possible, depending upon, that's where talent comes in, the talent of the artist is, is the style of the character. So I, by iconic, I mean they're, they're so, just by the basic shape, they're so recognizable. If I sit here and if I draw three circles, you are automatically thinking of Mickey Mouse. If I draw another circle, another couple of curved lines, you know, a couple more circles. We get closer and closer to it all the time. And I'll go through Mickey Mouse in one of the future classes. If I draw another shape, of course, you're going to think of another very iconic character. There we go. It's that easy. Once you have that basic shape down, everything else all falls into place. And the way that I teach cartooning is by using basic shapes. You'll see a lot of instructional books, when they first start up, they will tell, in the first chapters of the book, they'll tell everybody to do a stick figure in order to get the body style down. Whatever shape that they have here. Uh, circles for knees, circle for a foot. I don't see the practicality in that. When you can sit here and do basic shapes, and, and serve the same purpose and get the basic shape of your character already into your head. You can draw any character that you want, any cartoon character. If you have the passion or the willingness not to be frustrated, to draw a light, keep drawing it over and over and over again, you're eventually going to figure out in your mind how to draw that character. And the other big thing to keep in mind also uh, is that these characters don't always stay the same look. A lot of these characters will evolve over time. Mickey Mouse, when he first started, doesn't look like the Mickey Mouse of today. Garfield's another classical example of a character that when Davis first started drawing him, looked completely different from the way he looks now. And that's because he's drawn them over and over and over again, and he's pared it down, he's, he's brought in his talent and his style, and has worked the character to the point where it's the most serviceable for him. And that's the other cool thing about cartoons. Cartoons are not meant to be difficult. They're not meant to be multi-layered uh, as much as just getting your point across. So, okay, draw light. Don't get frustrated. Don't get too difficult. Try not to make it too detailed when you first start, especially if you're creating your own cartoon. If you're copying another cartoon, don't be afraid to pull up a copy, even if you have to trace it. Absolutely trace it just to get it in your head where the shapes are, where they, where they fall into place. There is nothing wrong at, when you're first starting on tracing cartoon or a picture. Where it gets wrong is when you start charging money for it. But when you're first starting, great way to learn is by copying. A lot of young artists, when they first start, if they're not drawing light, they're going to sit here and they're going to take their time working on a portrait and they might spend hours making sure that nose is right, making sure those eyes look correct if it doesn't look correct. Uh, uh, they got to go through and, and change it. Got to go through and change it, change it, change it in order to get the uh, in, in order to get the right look. They spend all that time on the little features and the tiny details to make sure it looks good and they're trying to do their best. They get down to the shoulders. Oh, and they're, they're putting all their time into the collar. They get down past the shoulders, close to the stomach, and they're out of paper. That adds to their frustration. They decide that they can't do it, that they're not, they're not a good artist, and they just shut down. Where instead of doing that, if you just sit here very quickly and go through a basic body style, basic shapes, again... That's really all you need. 
you'll be able to see that image in your head. You'll be able to put as much of that image as you want to on your paper. And then you can go through and add whatever details and, and your own style to it after that. And again, it's that easy. And it is an easy trap for young artists to get into, not to sit there and start with an outline. A lot of young artists feel, well, whatever line I put down, that's the line that's there, and that's the line that needs to stay on the paper. Nope. Use your eraser. Use your eraser and admit or acknowledge the idea that you're going to make mistakes. Sometimes you're going to make happy mistakes, too, where something doesn't go exactly the way that you want, and you'll sit there and you'll look back on it and you'll go, well, that line looked pretty good. I think I'll keep that line. Basic body style, head, oval for a head. Give it a little neck. Cartoon body styles. There's all sorts of different sizes of heads. Most heads are based off of a circle. Even the more detailed superhero work, you're going to see that top of that skull is based off of that circle with a jaw on it. And sideways, again. Circle, jaw on it. Start with a circle or an oval, then add arms. The first class that I do, I usually have them draw it down to the elbow, elbow to the wrist. Same thing with the legs, only a little thicker, down to the knee, down to the ankle, with a half circle flat on the floor to represent the foot. Now you see, this foot isn't as big as that foot. You can always make it as big, or at this point, you can take out your eraser, move the leg over in order to make that foot just right. Basic body style. That's all you need. Once you have the basic shape down of your character, and your character is all sorts of different shapes. These body styles change constantly. Mickey Mouse is a good example. Starts out as a bean. Sometimes when you see him in the front, he's more of an oval. It's the way it works. It's the way they show dimension on their character. Here's a basic body style. Once you get that basic body style down, You'll be able to do whatever you need to with it once you can see that in your head. And that's really the key. Uh, use your imagination. Don't be afraid to use your imagination. Don't be afraid to go crazy with it. Once you see that basic body style down in your head, you're going to be able to take that and bend it and, and move it however you need it to go. Start with a head. Do a body. Put in the basics for the arm leg. You'll figure out your foreshortening. We're going to get into that here in another class. We're, get, we're going to cover dynamics. I want to cover absolutely every aspect of comics and cartooning that I possibly can in order to help you to enjoy doing comics and cartoons because for me it's always been a joy to do. It's always been a passion to do. And that's the very basic foundation of cartooning. You can join me Anytime on the uh, Indie Comics Network, I do a podcast on Wednesday nights where we talk about the comic business called the Zimcast. That's on Wednesday nights at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Then I also, on Friday morning, I do Comics by Night, where we get into the more uh, technical side of creating sequential art and comics. That's Comics by Night at 5 a.m. on Friday morning here on the Indie Comics Network, and also on Sunday morning at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, I do the Sunday Funnies, where we work real hard to put the fun back in the funny books, where we talk about the comics and the other things that fuel our passions to keep doing this great art form. So like and subscribe to the Indie Comics Network. Hit that bell for notifications. I'll be putting up videos as often as I possibly can on how to draw on top of the podcasting that we do. Look at the great roster of shows that we have there, and there's a lot more on the way. Uh, make sure you add in the comments if you want to learn how to draw a character or two. I'll be more than happy to help. Thank you very much. Thanks for